What's cracking everybody? This is your boy Get Low, a Mr. Bedroom Eyes, aka the Panda Dropper, and yeah, I do fuck fat bitches too. And this is episode two of Let It Be Known. Next producer, photographer, DJ, boxer, same as possible. Can you do yourself, my man? I go by the name of Day Day. Uh, everybody know Day Day, Daquan, whatever y'all call me, DJ D Gaz, whatever y'all call me. So, yeah, Day Day. That's what, that's what's up, bro. And I appreciate you being back with me again in um, episode two. And once again, I want to tell you, bro, appreciate you on bringing me on with the team. For sure. Uh, Appreciate the consistency, the drive, the effort, all the love and support through all my personal struggles and vice versa. Do want to thank you, brother, for having me oh, yeah, on the team and everything you're doing for me, man. I want to say I appreciate you, man. Always. All right, now, y'all know me, man. I'm about to get right into it. This episode so let it be known. And I got a topic. The first topic I want to talk to you about is workplace relationships, the pros and the cons. Uh, what made me think of this topic was the situation. I know you keep up with sports like I do. Right. And what happened with I- Iman Udoku? Is it? I don't know how to say yeah, it. Is it, is it? Am I close? <laughs> Something like that. Something yeah. like that. And, you know, with his situation with the um, ladies at uh, Boston is coming out a lot more scandal about it. Have you heard about the other stuff that's coming out? Uh, not at anything after. Uh, you can put me on game. Okay. Well, from what I'm hearing, I ain't, you know how tabloids was work. From what I've been hearing, it's been more of him being more aggressive and sending, like, I don't want to get the story confused or fucked up, but it's been, like, just to say he's been more, they say he's been more touchy-feely than what he was supposed to be mm-hmm. with the, uh, more than just her. Right. So, um, now she's that, not the only one. Yeah, that's what they're saying. They're saying she's not the only one. They say it's been happening for a minute in the organization. Now, that's one of the, the obvious one of the cons. Uh, when uh, somebody gets touchy feely, but have you ever had any workplace relationship situationships? Uh, yeah. To be kind of honest, like I was hit on before, like plenty of times to where, like, in a way, it was kind of uncomfortable. Not by like, hey, oh shit, I've been touched on and shit. I ain't gonna say it's uncomfortable because shit, I like to be touched on. Yeah. Like but it's it's a little it throws you off when you're a man. You ain't used to it. Yeah, you ain't used to it. Um, but yeah, like I've been touched on at the workplace. Uh, definitely words like getting hit on. But yeah, I probably had somebody like playing around, touching me in ways. It's like kind of like yo, we ain't together. Like you shouldn't be touching me that way. But then again, I'm a nigga, so I don't mind it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I I would say I, I've been there before. Okay. And something else I thought about when I thought about workplace relationships is what people don't talk about is almost, I ain't going to say 90%, but let's just say through the course of American history of mm-hmm. what we know in this country, a good portion of relationships and marriages start in the workplace. A lot of people meet they, the mothers of their children and fathers in the workplace, meet their husbands and wives in the workplace. And one thing I can say as far as I go I feel like this. If you meet somebody in the workplace, that's pro- that's productivity for one. That's what, that's what I say a pro of it. You, at least you meet somebody that's willing to get up, get out, and get something. Yeah. That's one thing. I would also say it's a pro in the sense that meet someone in the workplace, at least you know that their schedule and your schedule in a relationship can work because it kind of revolves you, you know right. you know when yeah. okay if we're both working together we know we got these holidays off so we can plan things for this That's we right. we know we can um vacation at this time no matter like if i'm working night shift you work on morning shift we both know that we can vacation together because of x y and z so those are some of the good things that i think about workplace relationships that go down what you think some of the good things about workplace relationships uh that's definitely one. Um, it it do depends though. Like if if y'all got the same like work shift, uh, then that's definitely a pro. Like y'all got the same work shift, y'all like you say, you pretty much hit it. Like y'all both can get off like at the same time. Um, things can differ though. Like if he work, depending on what y'all job, it really depends on what your job is. Because if they work like a night shift and then you work day shift, y'all never gonna really see each other. Man. It's time for you to go in. 
you know, somebody's going to be home at one point. So it really depends. But it can be a pro, just depending, especially if you've got the same type of schedule. Um, it can be a pro. And another pro to me is, uh, depending on what the job is, let's say you're a lawyer and you need mm. another lawyer in the workplace. Y'all both love the same exact thing. Y'all both do the same thing. So, I mean, you got somebody that's showing the same interest as you. Um, if you're a personal trainer, y'all both do, y'all both personal trainers. So, that's a plus, bro. Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's some real thing. shit. Yeah, I didn't like, think of that. Me, I DJ. If I found somebody else who's, you know, like a full time DJ, like I would be like, damn, okay, she's dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? We can do gigs together and stuff like yeah. that. We can be a duo. So <laughs> it is a con, especially um, if y'all do the same thing, because y'all, sh- y'all obviously showing the same liking and the same thing. So that's that's a pro to me. Yeah, that, that's definitely. And not only is that, that's, that's more than a pro to me. That's some. That's some career building less forever type shit. If yeah. y'all both like liking the same, thing. the same thing, like especially like you say you a DJ. So if your significant other was a DJ, y'all could do so much shit creativity, and that will also keep sparks and everything in a relationship. Yeah. Is then now that's dope. Now uh, the con to that that I will see would also be given the fact that if you're in the same like you say in the same field, let's just say that. Um, you're you're a boxer and your girl was a you're a professional boxer. Your girl's a professional basketball player. Right. There's as when you're on that level or when you do certain things for some people, there's competition. So there's always going to yeah. be that that deal where it's like, like I said, if you're a lawyer and she's a lawyer, that the kind of that will be like, okay, she won this case, now I got to win my case. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? If she's a personal trainer, oh, she got this guy. In the NBA, I got to get my guy to NFL. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's that could be an issue, too, because there's sometimes it builds competition for people that have those extreme egos. And, and like you say, and in certain fields, right. you know what I'm saying? So that that's one of the things. Another kind, I think, would be. One thing I know about men and women is this. A lot of women don't want a dude unless they know other females are interested in him. And especially when you want, because I've had this problem, because me and my uh, significant other worked together. Right. And there was a situation, I'll put it out there, I don't give a fuck. There's a situation where this girl had seen my previous podcast. And she would say, okay, you, you seem to know a lot about relationships. She was just getting some advice about, you know, her woo woo. And then the day goes by, and my girl comes up to me heated. She red and she a brown skin bitch, so you know she mad. Yeah. <laughs> so you know she mad. <laughs> and she said me with, okay, I heard that old girl put her hands in your pocket. She pulled out money. She did this. And I'm like, but you're working right down there. <laughs> like, why would I do that? So this is my girl telling me. So old girl is walking by. I said, hold on, wait a minute. Shorty, come in. Now tell her, tell my girl, tell her what you just told me. Because I'm pissed now. Because I know this, whoever told my girl that. It pissed me off because, like I said, and that's another kind of working together with somebody. Jealousy can arose. Somebody went to my girl and told her something that was a complete and utter lie. And what made me also mad was that my girl believed the bullshit. Now, that could be a problem as far as workplace oh, relationships go. Yeah, like dealing with shit like that. So me and my girl, we worked it out, but that's just something that happened. Somebody made up this complete fucking bullshit about us, me and a whole other female. And I'm like, but my, I'm driving a forklift. My girl, I can clearly see where my woman is. And my woman can clearly see where I'm at. So like, why in the hell would I allow another motherfucker to go in my pants and pull out my wallet? And pull out some money. Right. What she can clearly see. Right. So that's just one thing that happened with me. Has there, has there ever been a situation with you and a girl on a workplace and jealousy and anything like that? Uh, yeah, in a way. Or I had girls like kind of pull up before. Whoa. I mean, one time. It only happened like once. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Like, kind of just pulled up on some shit, and, like, she knew the other girl was there, like, liked it. Um, but ain't nothing too bad, but, yeah. But, like, 
more than one person. Uh, I can't really think think right now, but I'm sure it has. I know it's been like probably more than one girl they've been talking about me at the workplace and like some jealousy involved. I think it happened before. I just can't pinpoint the exact time. I've had that happen a couple of times, but I think most men who are on top of this shit, you had that shit happen. Now, moving on from that, <coughs> excuse me, that fuck me, we said the girl pulled up, I ain't gonna lie, damn, that shit made me joke. Can you get almost more again? Damn. <coughs> damn. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is groupies. <coughs> but I'm talking about, <coughs> excuse me, damn. <laughs> this some live shit, yo. Uh, when I mean groupie, I mean to get down the hang around. The niggas, and I ain't talking about females right now, y'all. I'm talking about dudes who, or people who like to hang around. And sometimes I have misjudged people who really wanted to soak up some game as somebody that's just trying to get with me. And I also have had situations where people see me podcasting or people may see you boxing or DJing or photography, taking, doing your thing, doing your thing. And they'll try to come around it just because it looks hot, it looks popular, it looks like, you know, they can see that what you're doing is something not only you love, but you're good at. They can see the glow on what you do. Okay. So, like, have you have you ever had that feeling about people? Have you ever experienced that before? Or, like, in, in life in general, I've seen it happen where, you know, this nigga is hanging around homeboy because he getting money or some shit like that. Or he just, she just fucking with shorty because... Ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was, I've seen it all the time. Um, have I experienced it? I'm trying to think if I have. Uh, I don't think I've experienced it, but uh, nah, I ain't really not like that. Nah, I don't think I really experienced it. Not with DJing. I ain't really had girls like come up to me or nothing like that. Because usually, depending where you DJing that too, like times I DJ at the club. It was like in the booth. Too many okay. people can't really get to you. So I ain't really had no groupies like come up to me trying to holler like that. Um, shit. Uh, nah, I ain't never, I ain't think I really experienced it like that. And sometimes I have my lady with me. Sometimes it's some of the gigs that I do. And I do like good events too, like uh, birthday parties, things like that. So anybody really trying to holler at the DJ. Okay, okay. So I ain't really had no groupies like that. Okay, I've, I ran into situations where I would call it a groupie-ish situation. Where when I first first started podcasting, I noticed a lot of people would want to just come up, probably be on the show, just come around and they'd do it for a set amount of time, mm-hmm. and then they'd just drop off. Or they always say, "Oh yeah, bro, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, man. You doing this? You doing that?" And then it's like no shows and things like that. And what I noticed from that is I even had one guy who would call me constantly just to tell me about the show. Uh, he would um, ask me advice about him trying to set up his own joint. And I started noticing that he would only hit me if it was something that was kind of like, how can I say it? He would only communicate with me when it was a, when it was just beneficiary with him. Right. He wouldn't, you know, just say, you know, hey, what's up? How you been, bro? Or, or even say, I pre- or even say, I appreciate it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? To show some kind of admiration. Right. If that was the right word I'm looking for. And I just kept saying to myself, like, this nigga just really just want to soak up what I got to just use it for his own. Mm-hmm. He ain't really got no intentions of being a good person. He just want to see what I'm doing, do what I'm doing, and then take it and do it his way. Yeah. And I was like, little old me, like, I ain't nobody in this shit right now, but I will be. And all day entertainment will blow this shit out the motherfucking roof. Y'all can count on that shit. So, I was like, damn, and I just stopped fucking with him. And then I noticed as I started seeing him on social media, the shit that I was giving him, he was doing. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped just all communication i stopped seeing him doing that and he went back to doing what he was doing before mm-hmm. now i'm gonna say what he was doing before or whatever because you know i don't really put i don't say no names or get too much shit but i do talk about this, everything i've been through i stand on everything i ever said and ever been through and everybody that know me know that shit but that's the situation that i've had that i've noticed that with people have you ever had that with podcasts 
Nah, I mean, it's only really good. I mean, it's only really like Keyshawn, Press. Um, Shouts out to Press. Yes, Shouts out to my man, Pepe Hilton. Nah, it ain't, I mean, nah, I ain't gonna say that because, I mean, it ain't, it really ain't no competition. Like, and I, I felt with him, like, we was involved in the school together and shit like that. So, like, we cool. So, nah, it ain't, like, it ain't no competition. It's all love for everybody. So, I ain't really had to. I ain't really had to go through nothing crazy, but I do feel like, you know, it may be people out there who kind of envy you in a way. Um, but if they do, they don't tell me. I feel you. I mean, the views is pretty good. We have good discussions, good topics. So I ain't never had nobody come at me, you know, that's trying to seem like competition and stuff. Man, that's all I love. Um, every angle, for real. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Have you ever thought that um, this person is hanging with me just because he think he can just get all eat off the glow. Have you ever had thought that like been around like meet somebody like that? This nigga just here really because he just gonna be a part of this. Group. Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, I th- let me see. I would have guess that probably. Nah, because you would guess we have. We were trying to promote him. It was just cool. Okay. But yeah, I mean, with different things though. Like yeah, I I had people who've been around me just because I'm like. Got something really going on good. They trying to blow off. Of, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been through stuff like that. Not specifically with podcasts, but with other things. Okay, okay, yeah, there's okay. definitely people who kind of trying to eat off you at the time and stuff like that. So, yeah. Well, yeah. until I... I'm sorry. Are you good? Are you good? Well, until I find me another lane, this is my only lane right now. This is what I'm good at. So, right. I think, and I'm going to say this, and I say this all the time. I think God made no one useful. I think God gave everybody a talent. Even if your talent is remedial. I don't give a damn dude. If all your talent is to do is fuck the shot these bitches, nigga, they got porn yeah. for you. Baby, if your talent is only sucking dick, baby, they got only fans and porn for you. God gave everybody something that they can do, that they can be a productive member of society. Yeah. Just find out whatever it is you do best with the least amount of effort and do it. And that's what God gave you. He gave me the gift of gas. Might yeah. as well use it. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> as a fact. Might as well use it. You know what I'm saying? And, and find avenues to express your shit. That's the best way to get get out there. And don't never don't never be afraid of yourself. And that and what I mean by that is don't be afraid to jump out there on what you believe in or what you're good at. Because if you do what you're good at and you sort of like you can take you off your you from talking with you in this conversation, you want to surround yourself with good people at all times. You know what I'm saying? And I see that when I was watching your content, I was like, man, everybody he got on his show. You know, that's why I asked you, have you ever felt that about anyone? Because yeah. it, it seems to me, everybody you've had on your show, everybody you've interviewed. Like-minded people. You know what I'm saying? All, not, not only like-minded, they have a respect for the for the, um, for the the platform. Exactly. They have a respect for you as a man. They have a respect for you and your home. They have, a, you know, the utmost respect for your views and everything. So, that's why I wanted to ask you about that. You know what I'm saying? Is, have you ever felt that off people? Because it seems like you don't want to surround yourself with the people who are like-minded and like you, but still sharp and still. Yeah, that's why, like, with guests, like, I'm not a picky person, um, like, when it comes to picking guests. Like, anybody is free to come on. But if I do feel like it's somebody that give off like that energy or something like that, I ain't going to try to bring them back. Um, I ain't going to say names, but it has been, now that I've, I've just thought about it, it has been probably probably like one or so somebody I wouldn't be you know I really want to have like to have that one. okay <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I just thought about it. it it has been one that you know what I'm saying but you know just don't invite them back um, exactly. but yeah but like you said though everybody else has been like minded like you said they got respect for the house they got respect for the platform which is important but I mean, to go to piggyback on what you said, like you do always want to surround yourself with like minded people, though, that do the same thing you do. And to add on to what you were saying, don't be afraid to make sacrifices. Like, you definitely, it got to come time when you do got to make a sacrifice to do what you want to do. So, don't be afraid to make sacrifices. Like Steve Harvey say, you got to take that jump, you got to take that leap. If you're a video game fan or you know anything about video games, it's a, my favorite you got to do. got to take your leap of faith. And 
that's that's what you got to do, man. You got to take a leap of faith in this shit. You got to, like you say, not be afraid to step off that ledge. If you ever seen the Spider Man movie, the uh, Miles Morales, uh, the Into the Spider Verse jump. Yep. Remember when uh, when Miles finally came into his own, he was listening to what Peter said, like, I don't know if I'm ready, so you won't. It's a leap of faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what you got to do in this life, man. Just don't be afraid to fail. Because if you do what you're good at, you will find, like you say, you will find like minded people. You will find people in your avenue. The only problem with that is some of those people could be trying to use you. Some of those people could be just out for their own benefit through you. But if you have any kind of instincts or more confidence, you can pretty much use your way and you do it out of it. That's why I'm in a situation I'm in. That's why I'm sitting here with you right now. I'm not saying that those people are bad people. Right. But what I'm saying is I had to make what's the best decision for me. Right. And that's why I'm with ADE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Okay. And another thing, I want to, uh, if you look at the topics I talked about, I got this from Patrice O'Neill, who was probably my favorite comedian. Somebody, yeah, comedian. And uh, guy was so hard for him. And he had his joke, and he was talking about harassment day on the job. <laughs> and it was like he described it as a day where you can basically ask a woman a sexual favor without. Getting a harassment charge because let's just be real. That's what I also talked about with a relationship. Even though I know I feel like I'm going back, <laughs> I just thought about it. Um, people, men and women flirt all the time on the job. Like you say, you had women touch on you before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had women, and I've also made inappropriate passes to women, and women have made inappropriate passes to me. Now I know on the job there's only but so much you can do. Right, right. So the joke was like, let's just find a way to get that out of our system completely without having to lose your job. Right, yeah. So I think there should be, for lack of a better term, a harassment day. Well, men yeah, and don't. women can find out if this person you're flirting with is sexually willing to go there with you or not without worry of being fired. Right, right. Yeah. You think that should happen? Shit, I'm all for it. I know it ain't going to happen, but shit, I'd be down for it. Girl, yeah. If I was single, yeah. Knowing me back in my day. Back when I was, you know, a single man, it's going to happen. <laughs> so you go, you're going to say, they, they, they going to know what I want to do. Off, off the real. rip. They Someone's going to ask when they come. I don't know about them, but they're going to know what I want to do. Damn um, right. But shit, I like it, though. That'd be dope. I ain't never thought of that. That'd be dope as hell. Yeah, just think, and then you can do it like a Valentine's Day, like he said. You can bring cars, flower candy, just go up to the girl. Yeah, she if she can say no, it ain't no wrong with saying no. Yeah, no wrong. Just now you know I wanted to fuck, and you didn't want to fuck before school. Yeah. Now now I know that I cannot flirt with you like I used to the rest of the year because it ain't gonna get me nowhere. Yeah. And that could also keep tension down at the job because on harassment day, if she says yeah or he says yeah or no, now you know that this was all just. Yeah, it's all BS. And if you say, yeah, then shit. Y'all did you the might have something. You might have your wife. Just, <laughs> you just do what you got to do after work hours and whatnot. Okay. You got to just link up afterwards. Bro. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell. So, and, and some jobs should let you fuck in the bathroom just to get it over with right now. <laughs> hey, if it's on harassment day, day, if it's on harassment well. day, fuck it. Yeah. Anything goes. Because somebody in the office going to get harassed too. But don't, who believe it? This ain't going to happen on the floor. It's going to happen in the office too. Yeah. And, um... Last topic before we get out of here, I want to keep keep my sake. My show was kind of 45 minutes, 30 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Keep it kind of short. What you want, bro? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Antonio Brown thing. Did you oh, did you watch the video? I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with your boy, man? We're going to talk a little sports, man, before we get out of here, too. What's wrong with your boy, man? So, man, I've seen everything. I just know. So, he wasn't neck and neck. He just flashed his ass. For one, see, that's I why think. I don't know because when I scrolled and kept reading the article, there was a picture of him laid back, looked like yeah, I'm about to say, looked like they blurred his yeah, dick out. Yeah, 
So like, I was oh. like, I guess he pulled that, flashed the dick. Yeah, I don't know if he flashed it. I guess he flashed the dick too. In the article, it said he was whipping it around. I said, these motherfuckers are stupid. Yeah, <laughs> like, I ain't see all that. I just seen me neither, when he but... like flashed his ass at the girl. And then I guess he was talking in her face or something. Yeah. And then he leaned back and then they blurred his dick out, if I ain't mistaken. Mm-hmm. So I, but it was a kids in the pool. No, nah, it was just okay. Adults. It was just adults. And he was in Dubai from what now? Like so I read a good portion of the article, and from what I remember reading the article, Dubai. He was in Dubai. Yeah, in Ain't Dubai. The laws, that's what I'm saying. So how could he got got away with that in Dubai? That that's got to either this is some shit. old shit in Dubai. That's like years <laughs> in prison for real. Yeah. Oh, they might take a hand off or something. Yeah. That, 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 that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real. Them shit. Yeah, that's what they do in that country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you harassing women at one of their hotels. Naked, bro. Like when I first read the article, I said when I first seen Dubai, the first thing I said was, well, "If they got Britney Griner for some cards, this nigga wasn't supposed to make it out of there alive." Nah, doing didn't. something like that, I ain't know that. So that was in Dubai. That's what the article once again. That's what they say, bro. That's that just. But the, we, right. I seen the footage, so whatever happened, happened to a degree. Yeah, but that is this year, though, right? That you, I think it said. Oh, I got to go back and read. It. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I got the dates, but when I seen it, I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" Yeah, yeah. Bro, the way Dubai is on, that nigga won't fuck with me. They cutting hands off. <laughs> I, I was told if you smoke Stone. weed down there, like they, yeah, they'll put you in jail easy. If you get caught like peeing outside, I mean they're like, like that ain't that ain't no ticket, no slap on the wrist. That's like jail time. Jail time, or they gonna do something to you? Shit. But yeah, I mean that's that's what I heard. Damn. They law different countries differently. You can't do shit like that. And, they, and American people need a people in the West need to realize that just because we go over there don't mean what we do here is cracking mm-hmm. over there because it ain't. And um, as far as football goes, your team, I know your team won today. So skull, my boys is on right skull. now. Skull, purple, Chief Kingdom. Who y'all playing? We got Tampa Bay. It's gonna be a tough one. I don't know the score. If anybody knows the score, that, though. if anybody knows the score, man, please let me know what the hell the story is of that. Uh, yes, it went that Brady. Yeah, he, I think he don't. He's kind of starting to kick in. It looked like it though, don't well, it? Well, I, I, he really don't got nobody though either. Well, all the weapons is back tonight, but oh, okay, yeah. So but, uh, Evans back. Evans back. Guy went back, and I think Julio back. Oh not? Is it Julio? I, yeah, I think they got Julio. Yeah, they got Julio. Yeah, yeah but I think you know Julio stay for real and coming off those yeah, injuries. They ain't gonna be a hundred percent just coming off those injuries yeah. tonight. So they oh. did look good though. Uh, first game. No, no, they didn't. Can they play the Cowboys first? I ain't gonna lie. They nah, haven't they looked look that good. Can they, they had a low scoring ass game. And kind of be honest with you, I don't think they broke 20 some points this year. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. I don't that's think why, that's what I'm saying. Like, the first game, he had all the weapons, and that was a low scoring game. Cowboys look weak too. Uh, and that's against the Cowboys. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, no diss to Michael Parsons, though. Look at that motherfucker. Yeah, he a fucking, yeah. He a real deal. And he played kind of hurt uh, last, last week. Mm-hmm. No, he, he didn't do much because he was kind of hurt. But, but yeah, Tampa Bay and all that, man, y'all should have that game. I hope Even if do. they play us bad, I think that's it. The Kansas was balling. Yeah, balling we balling. Well. And honestly, that game we lost against the, the oh, Colts right? was some bullshit. We had a game in the bag and Chris Jones. Nigga, listen to me. If you get a sack at the end of the game, this game, on Tom Brady in Tampa Bay, shut the fuck up and get off the field. Don't say shit. <laughs> sack his ass, do your sack nation dance on the sideline. Fuck doing it on the field. Nigga, we had that game one, cuz. Nigga, I was so mad at the game last yeah, week. I lost by a little bit. Bruh, at the you end know, of the I game. Seen I seen. Bruh, we was up by but like. They had a field goal. But yeah, matter of fact, they scored a touchdown that put them up by like three or something or two, whatever. I kicked. All I know is we was winning, and they needed to get a touchdown to just even win. But this is the crazy part. The game was already over. Chris Jones got a sack on, like, fourth, on like third and long, which made it a fourth and long. Punt, two kneels, we out of there. That's really the game. But he got into that bullshit with Matt Ryan. 15-yard penalty first down. Now them nail muffled the score like twenty some seconds. So what did he do? He hit him. Yeah. He sacked them, sacked. and they and they started talking shit. You know how it is. They throwing that bullshit, taunting shit now. So he sacked them, and then they started talking shit, and they caught the flag on. 
15 yard penalty, taunting first down. Them motherfuckers score like, I think it was 19, uh, between, it was between 19 and nine seconds left. I was mad than a motherfucker. Yeah, I ain't supposed to lose with Coach. So, Coach's one of them teams, though, that could kind of, if you, if you sleep on them if you want to, though, they can kind of beat you, though. They, who, they are, they decent. Who is your sleeper team this year in the NFL? Sleeper team this year. Oh. Uh, um, sleeper team. Team that you think will go, uh, make a, make, not beat a big name, but they'll make them, they'll make some noise in the playoffs. I mean, it's hard to deny the Eagles right now. I won't call them no sleeper. Well, now they ain't no sleeper. Okay, sleeper. Uh, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm going to go with, even though my boy is leading the division right now, one of the tough teams. Ooh, I think I know what you're doing. In the NFC, in the same division in my, I'm sorry, the NFC. No, you're in the North, right? North. Yeah, yeah, NFC North. It's the Bears. I knew you was going to say it, because them niggas is sneaky good. They sneaky good, bro. And they, we always, we play them that sweet, if I'm not mistaken. We always end up losing to them. Bro. Is it in Chicago or is it in Minnesota? I don't know about this year. I don't know. But okay. I think, I think we probably played them in the, in Chicago last year, so we we well, all play them twice. So the first game in Chicago, you know that we played. Yeah, I don't twice. know, I don't know, I don't know. But they a sneaky team. The Bears, <laughs> they always a team that can beat just about anybody for real. And they always usually beat us. I definitely know. So that would be mine. What about you? My sleeper team. I'm staying in my division. I'm saying I'm not staying in my my com- my conference because I'm in the AFC West. But I'm staying in the AFC and. I ain't gonna lie. I hate to admit this out loud, cause it come from a dude. It's fuck it, the Jags. I really, even though I think they lost yeah. today, I think they lost today. Yeah. But they one of those teams. Like if they get in the playoffs, don't sleep. I think so, bro. Tr- hey, I ain't gonna sure. lie. Your boy Lawrence out there looking. Good, that bro. boy balling, man. Like he they one of those good. teams that like they they really look put together. Really, I ain't think they had nobody on defense. Yeah, I ain't really pay attention to them. Like Me that, neither. Though. But when I watched them, I said, "Yo, I see why they two and one. These motherfuckers is all right." <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, they two and two now. But did they lose today? I don't know. I ain't. Because they was playing the Eagles. I watched my team. Matter of fact, fact, yeah, they did lose to the Eagles. Four and my team caught that dub. That's all I cared about. I was, all right, I see, I feel you. One, one. <laughs> all right, all right, I feel you. I feel you. So, um, what was the fight that just, uh, Triple G and Canelo? We didn't get a chance to rap about that. Okay, yeah. Let me do that real quick before we wrap it up and get out of here. Um, who won that fight? Because I, once again, I did not watch it. So I do not know. I'm ignorant. They was it two, two or three? How many times? This was the third fight. This is the third one. This was the ending, I think. The first one was. Damn, it, I know one of them was a draw. Yeah, one of them was a draw. Or was two of them? Was was all three of them draws? Or was no, all the no, first two draws? I think. Was the first two draws? I think Canelo won one, and the other one was a. Well, I can't remember. I know one of them was a draw for sure. Okay, well, let's just say somebody got one and one was a – no, is this the fourth one? Is, the four, is this the fourth or fifth time? Yeah, yeah somebody, bring it out. Yeah, because I didn't see the fight, but my money was on Triple G. Even though he had the age, my money was on Triple G because no matter his age, he just never stopped throwing. Yeah. And not only do he throw a lot of punches, he throw a lot of accurate punches. And that's he, – he's not a – um. Uh, who my man that beat Roy Jones back in the day? He had one of them funny names too. Kyle right. Saggy. My bad. So Canelo won a unanimous Woo! against Triple G, 116 112. Wow. So that was the first that was the first time. Okay, okay. I thought it was this one. I said, damn, he beat the shot, Triple G. Oh, damn, they did. They just fought. This. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, did we get that just passed? I think it was weekend oh. before last. Yeah. Man, I, ain't, I ain't been up on my boxing like I used to. Let me see. Bro, one, Canelo 2. I'm on it. In front of a sellout crowd again. Consecration defeated. I was, I was, I was defeated to have the majority of the season at the 12 round. But that might be the. Okay, that's the second. Okay.
because ain't nobody. I didn't even see. And what's crazy is after they fought, I didn't even see no highlights on ESPN. Like I didn't see nothing. Like was it a dark fight? Did something happen? What the fuck? So hold on. So Canelo won the first one. Okay. And then I think I just said this is one of the second. See, won the second one too by the unanimous you know, by a controversy, right? Yeah. Because he won the first one unanimously against Triple G. Yeah, first one you know. Yeah, he won the second one. Damn. Yeah. I thought Triple I could have sworn it was a draw on one of them bitches. I don't want to say Triple G at least beat him a draw with him one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he won both. Shit. So who won the most recent one? I don't get it, though. Yeah, Hello. Damn. Yeah. Canelo won all three. I could have sworn. Google line. I <laughs> swear. Canelo won one. It was I really thought it was a draw. One of them. Me too, bro. No, I, Canelo won one. That's what I was thinking. Canelo won one, and then it was a draw. And then I didn't know about the third, third one. one. Yeah, because I knew about the third one. That's what my mom asked about. You, asked you about it in the um yeah, the group chat. About it before. Yeah, like when we gonna like you was like you we we both I think we both with Triple G. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Triple G. Yeah, I, like I mean, I like Canelo too. Like, I ain't gonna hit on his game, but I, I was a Triple G fan Me though. Too. Me but too. Like I told you, though, I was like, even though I love Triple G, I was like, I think his age is catching up with him. So oh, I nice. did kind of side with Canelo yeah. just because he's still like younger and Triple G getting up there. In age. Yeah, I want Triple G not because not just because of the age, just because his his punches and bunches. But I think it probably wore him out this fight yeah. because of the age factor. Who yeah. was your top three boxers right now of all time? Ooh. I'm gonna throw Floyd in there. And then I like sheesh. No right or wrong is your thought. Yeah, these these is mine. I mean I, I, I can I definitely can go more, but I'm throwing uh Marvis Hagler because I love the way he fight both styles. Um yep. And then the third one, man, you just can't. The very first one I always knew just growing up, Muhammad Ali. So I, I want to toss that up though with him and Tyson, but I'm I'm putting Muhammad Ali just because of what he did in the history, like for blacks and everything. So, yeah, Marvin. Floyd, Marvin, Marvin. 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 Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good three. My favorite, I'm gonna go before, before I leave. Um, I know you know boxers. So I know you heard of Sugar Ray Robinson. Oh yeah, the illest of all time. Both hands could. The only man I ever seen, even though a lot of y'all don't know Sugar Robinson is, if y'all don't, go please go look up some of his fights. Now they old. Oh, yeah. But the sweet science, this motherfucker will knock a motherfucker out back pedaling. That's the first time I seen that shit. Like if you can knock a motherfucker out going backwards, right. yeah. Just imagine what his power was going Before. forward. Yeah. Good guy. So like that's my favorite fighter of all time, Sugar Robinson. Number two, I'm gotta be haggard like you say he was he was a left-handed fighter or he was naturally left-handed fighter who yeah, taught himself how to, yeah, yeah. Paul, who taught himself how to fight orthodox that, yeah. to this day i've tried i can't fight orthodox if you taught me i it's just and i'm naturally right-handed but yeah. i fight southpaw yeah i'm an orthodox but i can fight southpaw too i i, I couldn't fight i couldn't fight i love fighting right i switch can't. it up i tried Get my foot, my feet don't want to, my feet don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, I tried it. My dad was like, "Son, we just gonna keep you just strictly south far. We see right now switching up your stance is gonna get you knocked the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do it." And then my third, I get a lot of flack for this, but I like <coughs> excuse me, I like uh, Fabiano Puebla. He's an old, he's an old school Mexican. Who did? Uh, he got into a lot of fights with Roberto Duran. Um, he was one of the honestly, he was one of the best middle welterweights okay. that probably was. See, I, like, I'm sure I've seen it. I, I gotta look him up. Yeah, like I'm sure I've seen it. Because see, I'm I was born in the '80s, so my father was teaching me boxing. I was looking at all the fighters from the '50s, the '60s, the '70s, 
you know, the Jack Dempsey's of the world, the Rocky Marcianos, yeah. us at the Pino Cuevas's, Chavez's. So that's it. But hey, my man, my producer, DJ B Gas, booking for the videos, booking for your weddings, booking for your photo shoot ladies. Y'all know how it go. This your boy Get Low, and I'm out of here, man. Episode two, let it be known. Final thought. Uh, LBK. That's right, LBK, <laughs> man. LBK. That, that, that's how, you know what? When, after, when you do the intro, make sure you, I want, as soon as we come on, I want you to do the all day shit first and then just draw. I, I don't care how you do it, LBK. You spray paint it, punch it, <laughs> kick it. I don't give a fuck. Just LBK, but let it be known. But final thought, um, I want everybody to know this. Fuck you if you don't like it. You say fuck if you don't like fuck it. Fuck you if you don't like it. But if you like it, y'all know what to do. It's free 99. Slap that like button like Will Slap Chris. Hit the subscribe button. Go watch every episode of All Day. All Day. Yeah. Go watch every episode of The Pie Family. Talk, I'm sorry, Talk of the Day. I said that wrong. Watch every episode of Talk of the Day. The Pie Family. Stream on there, your cloud till it blow the fuck the shit out the window. Better be known, man. Me and all the ass, boy. ADE, we out. <laughs>